Hey guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about Revit keyboard shortcuts and hotkeys. Now, I know this can be a bit annoying to learn at first, but Revit is an extremely fast piece of software for drafting and modeling, and knowing these shortcuts and hotkeys can make the process of creating your buildings even faster. And Autodesk kindly provided us with a list of keyboard shortcuts and hotkeys, and they kind of created some weird categories which I guess makes sense but I thought it would be a much more practical way for you to learn them if I showed you in a realistic real-world situation in a project and before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day and if you're already using Revit keyboard shortcuts, tell me in the comment section below and tell me which are some of your favorite ones, which ones do you find most efficient. And the link to the PDF with all of these Revit shortcuts will be in the description of this video, so check it out. So here I am in Revit, and before we go over all of the shortcuts, I'm first going to show you how to modify them or change them or add new shortcuts. And then I'm going to tell you why you should never ever do that. So you need to go here to the View tab and you find the Windows panel and you open, open up this User Interface drop menu and here you have Keyboard Shortcuts or KS is the shortcut for Shortcuts menu. So I'm just going to type in KS for Shortcuts. Let me cancel out of that. And here you go. So you get this menu and you can kind of scroll down and find all of the shortcuts you might need. And these are all the paths or basically your commands and then you get all of the shortcuts over here in the middle and you can filter them through whatever maybe architecture tab and now you can filter through them okay but you shouldn't really ever change these shortcuts because you never know on which computer you're going to be working so if you're on your home computer that would, that's nice that's okay you can change them a bit if you want but you shouldn't really get used to your own shortcuts because you might get a job in a in an office where you might not be the only one that's using that computer and you have to use the default Revit shortcuts so you should kinda get familiar with the default shortcuts and not change them okay but I'm just going to cancel out of that and go to the architectural tab and now let's start modeling something and see how to utilize these shortcuts in the best way so I'm just going to go here to a wall command just typing in WA and then I'm going to be placing some walls using these modify tools and then let's again go WA for wall maybe add some walls inside of here perhaps one wall like this, one like that, perhaps something like this, and then you can play around with this. And the reason why it's good to use these shortcuts is, for example, right now with the DR or door shortcut, I can add new doors really quickly. So I can kind of switch through commands and then I might maybe go into wall, maybe add another room over here. So then I can switch to door, DR, and then maybe I can flip this, go into window, WN, and then let's change, let's select some window, place some windows here, some of the windows here. So you can kind of quickly go through commands and change it up and you can kind of draft quite fast. And this is basically the point of Revit. Revit basically means revise and edit. So the point is to kind of throw on some walls, doors, windows, whatever, and then change it up real quick so you can basically choose different design options. So when modeling this, you can utilize some other commands. So let's add a grid over here to which we're going to add some columns. So for grid, GR is the shortcut. So I'm just going to place one grid over here perhaps. And then I'm going to be placing a column. So CL is the shortcut for column and then you can basically place your column okay I made a mistake there so first let's change this to height and then we can place our columns perhaps over here and now as you can see here our columns or CL was the shortcut for columns aren't really in any particular order and you can give order to this or basically make these 
increments over here the same size by using the dimension line and I'm going to use a shortcut for that of course so just type in di for dimension and let's place a dimension over here kind of like that move it out and hit this EQ button and then it made all of these equal but again if I go into dimension or di and they mentioned something, perhaps this line over here. You can see this is a quite high number, that's because it's in millimeters. So how to change the units? Of course we have a shortcut for that, so just type in UN for units, and here I can change this to meters perhaps. Go OK. And as you can see this kind of snapped to the center line of this wall, and let's say you want to snap it to the outside of the wall, and you can do that by again DI dimension. And when you come in close you can hit the tab, and tab is kind of a hotkey, it's not really a shortcut, and then you can select this outside line. And again here you can tap the tab button and kind of place the dimension like this. And let's just add a floor over here. So I'm just going to go in SB or concrete floor or slab basically. I think that's what it stands for. And then I can create kind of a concrete slab over here that kind of encompasses these columns. And I can hit the tab key to select this outer line. And here let's say we want to align it to here. Shortcut for that is AL for align and Again, you can align it, perhaps lock it in place, if that's what you want to do. And here when you're in this edit boundary mode, which is here you can see create floor boundary, and you have this for a bunch of different elements, you can do this with walls and a bunch of different elements. And you can kind of play around with these tools over here, and you have some shortcuts over here as well. So perhaps I want to add something like this. And then I want to kind of trim this in place, so I can use SL for split tool or split element. And then I can trim this in place using TR, which is trim and extend. And as you can see now, we can trim everything in place. And there are a bunch of other tools you can use, but I'm going to use these later. Perhaps offset tool can be useful in these cases. So let's say you want to offset some of these lines, so you can use offset. So just OF and then you add the offset increment over here and if you choose copy that means it will basically just copy it and when you come in close and if you uncheck copy if I do this it will kind of transform the line or just move it by the increment of one meter in this case. So I'm just going to delete these lines because I don't really need them and then trim and extend or TR to trim and extend this in place. And let's just finish this off. Okay, there's a problem somewhere. I don't really know where, let's see. Okay, the span direction is missing, so we need to add span direction. And when you hit slab, it's different than normal floor because you need to add this span direction and you get this annotation which you can delete later on. Okay, so let's go into 3D right now. So I'm just going to go here to default 3D view. And this is kind of what we have. So let's say I want to duplicate this floor slab on the level above. So I'm just going to select it and hit Control C, which is the shortcut for copy. And then here we can go into paste menu, open it up and go align to selected levels and go to level two. Now, if I did just Control V, it would kind of have pasted it at the same level so that doesn't work you have to go here to paste menu and let me just delete this and let's now attach these walls and the tab will help us so the tab hotkey if I just hover over one wall and hit tab I select all of the walls I just go attach top base and attach it and I can go here select all of these and use the control hotkey just to select mul multiple and as you can see I've got a little plus sign when I hit control and if I hit shift it lets me remove from selection and we get this little minus sign so by using control and shift you can add and remove elements from your selection so I'm just going to attach this and let me just attach these columns as well okay yeah attach top base and here we go so we have this but let's say these levels aren't 
perhaps what we want to have so let me go into south elevation and here we have our levels and we can change them and I can add new levels by using the shortcut LL which is the shortcut for level and then I can just place a level over here or I can use perhaps an offset of four meters I don't know and place a new level over here and you can use levels and you can also use reference planes these are probably more for creating in place families or just families in general or massing but the shortcut for for reference planes is RP or reference plane and then I can place one over here or here I don't know and then you can maybe select them and name them so you can use them easier later on okay so let me just go back into 3d and when you're in 3d like this you might be kind of I don't know zoomed out and you can't really see where your drawing is and you don't want to kind of blindly navigate through your drawing you can use the shortcut ZA for zoom all so you can kind of zoom in your drawing and if you want to kind of zoom in further to perhaps some detail you can use zoom region this helps you out so you don't have to endlessly scroll you can just go into ZR or zoom region and then just select one region perhaps this window over here and then I can work on it and while we're here let's orbit around this window and as you can see these lines are quite thick and that's because we're in 1 to 200 uh, view scale and we can change it to something smaller like 1 to 2 just to see these lines a bit thinner but that's the wrong way to approach it I'm going to leave it at 200 and let's say I want to work around here but I can't see anything everything is just dark and black and I can change this by turning on thin lines and TL is the shortcut for that and here you can see this button it's kinda light, light up and if I type in TL again it will turn off so TL is shortcut for that and it makes everything look kind of lighter and easier to work on and then you just turn it off TL to basically see how it, how will it look like when it's finally printed okay so here I have some elements and let's say I want to isolate some elements so let's say I want to work just on these columns I can select them and I can type HI and I can isolate these columns and perhaps now work on them and if you go want to go back into or basically turn off temporary hide isolate and go into your regular drawing you just type in HR and you're back and if you want to hide some element temporarily just to see how would it look like without it perhaps without this floor over here maybe we want to see our walls inside you just go HH and that's hide element in view so we kinda hit our wall over here and then HR to bring it back and if you want to change maybe your vi visual settings you can do that just by typing in GD so GD and you get these graphic display options and then you can maybe play around with the transparency I don't know add some shadows or whatever makes you happy okay so let's go back into level one perhaps and let's decide to add some furniture inside so I'm just going to be adding some furniture as components so for components just type in CM and let's cancel out of this but normally you would save your project that's for sure and let's just place this desk over here so we have this desk and we can play around we can move it like this or we can go into MV or move command and then you can actually snap to a certain place or certain point and then you can I don't know align it to something that you want or you can copy it just by selecting it and typing in CO and copying it around you can rotate it by typing in RO that's the shortcut for rotate so let's rotate it a bit and then you can't really scale this thing as you can see here scale the shortcut is RE but you can't really scale a lot of elements in Revit perhaps one of the elements you can scale is DL or basically detail lines and let me just place one line so DL is the shortcut and you can select these lines and you can type in RE to scale them and you can kinda select them and scale them around but you can't really do that with a lot of other elements in Revit so let me just delete these lines and another cool trick you can use 
for families and placing them and doing whatever is you can use array so AR is the shortcut and now you can kind of create an array so let me set this last let's add I don't know five in between and you can select it move it and you get this array and just by selecting these elements and changing this you can change the array and as you can see when I select one of these this is a group now let me explain how groups work and of course their shortcuts so I'm going to go here in 3d and let's say I want to group this door these windows oops these windows these this door and this wall and I want to create it as a group so I'm just going to type in GP for group and you get this dialog and you just go okay and this is now a group and group basically works kind of a in-place project if that makes any sense you have those in-place families which are basically families that are inside of your project and they're just native to your project and they're not standalone families you can't add them to other projects and groups work a similar way but they're just kind of like projects that are native to your project they're in-place projects and here you have this link and you've got this LG shortcut so if you type in LG and elements will be deleted okay and you can actually replace them or basically just select this and you can go to desktop or wherever and you can save this group so you save this group and just you can type in I don't know wall group and you can basically save this and it will be saved as a new project so you can save parts of your projects when you group them and you type in LG so that's the shortcut for that and now let's let's use mirror we haven't tried that out so I'm just going to go here in level one and we have this desk over here and let's say we want another desk in the same spot on the other side so just mirror it around so you can type in MM for mirror and you can mirror it around so MM basically means mirror pick access so you just select it you go MM and then you just pick the axis around which it will be mirrored but let's say you don't have this wall and you want to mirror it around your own axis so you can use draw mirror instead so you just select one element you type in DM and then you draw just one line it can even be like an angled line over here and then it just mirrors it around the line that you drew so that's a cool option as well okay so moving on let's try and go, let's go into 3d and let's say you want to see how this looks like in some realistic settings so I'm just going to change this to realistic and here it's kinda dark and boring and let's say you want to change just one bit so let's say just one face of this wall you want to change it in something different and for that you can use the paint tool it's a very efficient way to get something done so I'm just going to go and type in PT for paint let me choose this I don't know parking stripe and it might make sense to just choose the color and then go done but it, that's not how this command works you actually need to have this window opened up on your screen while you're using the command so you just select the color and then you place it somewhere on your project and then you hit done so that's basically how it works I know it's a bit silly but that's what you get and then let's say you want to render this so you can just type in double R and you get this render dialog or you can use ray trace which is basically kind of a just render and then you can orbit around so let me show you how you just go R Y and then you get you wait for a second and then it starts ray tracing and then you can kind of orbit around and then it basically renders it all again and you can zoom in and it renders it again but you really need to have a fast computer to be doing this so don't don't do it if you have some if you have a slow computer it's just not necessary to use it I rarely use it and my computer is fast enough to handle it okay so those were some of the basic shortcuts I use in my daily work I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you have find it useful and the link to all shortcuts in Revit is in the description of this video so thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions for future tutorials please leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day